Hello and welcome to the episode 121 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we will cover all of the things that happened to the Beatles on the 1st of May, plus those that happened during the month but have no specific date recorded. We'll have the start of a love affair for John Lennon, the last proper UK concert of the Beatles' career, and the plotting of a new album. At some point in May 1955, John Lennon first listened to Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel. The encounter was love at first sight for 15-year-old John. There is some disagreement about an event that might have happened in May 1958. According to Beatles historian Mark Lewison, drummer Colin Hanton left the Quarrymen during the month. Lewison maintains that the event took place after an engagement in Prescott that didn't go well enough to secure interval bookings at a local cinema. After a furious drunken quarrel with Harrison Lennon and McCartney, Hanton jumped off the bus with his drums way before his usual stop and ceased practicing or performing with the other three. Those of you that have followed me from the beginning know that another source of this podcast, BeatlesBible.com, has this episode happening in January 1958. I couldn't tell which date was more probable, and so I've decided to recap the story for this episode too. If you want more details, please check episode 1 of What A Fab Day. Moving on to the 1st of May 1961, we get the Beatles performing with Pete Best on drums for their second German residency at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg. Exactly one year later, in 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best, were on the stage of the Star Club for their third residency in Hamburg. In late spring 1963, we find Beatlemania constantly on the rise. While it will take another six months for the national papers to pick up on its birth – the term Beatlemania itself was to be coined in October, for example – the band started resenting the growing hysteria. While in its wake the lads had been flattered, this constant attention from the public had already started to border on the pathological, so much so that they had been forced to change their normal habits to cope. Eventually, this would lead to an unhealthy relationship with public appearances, including concerts. And that's exactly the problem I have with my three or four listeners. <laughs> yeah, right. It gets lonely in the studio and you can make it better by dropping me a line and commenting on my work so far. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Why? One thing is sure. If you head to www.simonmas.com support, you'll find other ways in which you can help me out to create even better music-related content online. You can make the difference. Thank you for choosing to do so. On the 1st of May 1964, the Beatles were at the BBC Paris studio in London to tape their third consecutive bank holiday special for BBC Radio. Again titled From Us To You, the show was aired on the 18th of May, between 10 a.m. and 12 noon. The rehearsals and the taping took place between 6.30 and 9.30 p.m., with the Beatles performing I Saw Her Standing There, Kansas City Hey 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 Hey, I Forgot To Remember To Forget, You Can't Do That, Sure To Fall In Love With You, Can't Buy Me Love, Matchbox and Honey Don't. For the latter song, John Lennon performed the main vocal part while, as you probably know, in the subsequent band recording of the number, it will be Ringo Starr to cover that role. In addition, the band furnished the usual witty and joking barter would show host Alan Freeman, reading requests and performing an impromptu version of With Monday With You to the tune of Happy Birthday. It's interesting that the Beatles kept recording old rock and roll classics for their radio appearances, material that they couldn't perform live anymore and that their increased songwriting output kept out of their albums. Exactly two years later, in 1966, the Beatles were at the Empire Pool in Wembley 
for their fourth and final appearance at the new Musical Express annual poll winners All-Star concert in front of 10,000 people. Coincidentally, albeit it was unknown at the time, it was the last official concert of the band in UK. The Beatles performed I Feel Fine, Nor Were Men, Day Tripper, If I Needed Someone and I'm Down. The concert was filmed, but the ABC cameras were switched off when it came to the performances of the Beatles and of the Rolling Stones, due to disagreement between ABC Television and their respective managements over compensation. The Beatles were filmed when picking up their two prizes, though, one as Best British Vocal Group and one for Eleanor Rigby as the Best British Disc of the Year, and were then featured in the Paul Winners concert program which started airing on some ITV networks on the 15th of May, between 3.50 and 5 pm. The ceremony marked the first time since 1963 that the band had failed to win the prize for the Best World Vocal Group category, which, this year, went to the Beach Boys. Moving on, in late May 1968, the Beatles reconvened at George Harrison's home in Escher, Surrey, to record a number of demos using his Ampex 4-track machine. The material had been mostly written or completed around the time the band had spent in India. The songs, according to Mark Lewisons, were Cry Baby Cry, Child of Nature, unissued by the Beatles and later released by John Lennon in 1971 with new lyrics as Jealous Guy, the continuing story of Bungalow Bill, I'm so tired, Year Blues, Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey, What's the New Mary Jane, Unreleased, Revolution, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Circles, released by George Harrison in 1982, Sour Milk Sea, never recorded officially by the Beatles and given to Jackie Lomax, Not Guilty, released by George Harrison in 1979, Piggies, Julia, Blackbird, Rocky Raccoon, Back in the USSR, Honey Pie, Mother Nature's Son, Obladi Oblada, Junk, released by Paul McCartney in 1970, Dear Prudence and Sexy Sadie. On the 1st of May 1969, we have two mixing sessions, between 2.30 and 7.00 pm, working from the EMI Studio 2 in Abbey Road, Chris Thomas produced three stereo mixes of Old Darling, none of which will be released. Then, working from Studio 3 between 7 and 10.45 pm, John Lennon produced the mix of John and Yoko, using the material recorded on the 22nd of April and on the 27th of April. The track would end up on the wedding album. And with these two mixing sessions, we can end the current episode. Tune in tomorrow when the Beatles will record something. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.